Hi, my name is Katherine Parker. I'm the registered dietitian here at Stringfellow Memorial Hospital. I'm really excited to talk to you today about why nutrition matters, and we're going to be focusing on bariatric surgery. So first thing, before I was a dietitian, I did not really think much about this. Um, you know, it's worth understanding and considering that no matter what your medical history is, just like fuel is to a car, our bodies require that we provide certain nutrients to help us function properly. So, you know, some food for thought is what makes our bodies work. Why nutrition matters. I kind of want to break it down a little bit more as we go into this uh, slideshow. Um, a nutrient is a chemical substance that gives you energy for the necessary um, metabolic functions your body is required to do. Think about what all you're doing right now. You know, even as I'm giving this presentation, I'm uh, thinking, breathing, my heart's beating. Um, if you had lunch, your body is working to digest and process the uh, nutrition you just consumed. Um, essential nutrients are nutrients that are vital to the normal development and maintenance of our bodies. Basically, we cannot live without them. There are actually six essential nutrients, which include carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals, and water. So as you can see, it's extremely important um, that we understand about the essential nutrients. Um, there are macronutrients and micronutrients. Uh, three of them that are called macronutrients are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. They're called macronutrients because they are required in larger amounts to fuel the body. They're essential for the body to grow, repair, develop tissues, and to regulate life. Um, two of them, vitamins and minerals, are called micronutrients because they are required in smaller amounts, uh, but they're still very extremely important for the normal functioning of our bodies. Uh, this table shows some general primary functions of the six major nutrients. Um, obviously, water is important. Um, it dissolves and carries nutrients, removes waste, uh, regulates body temperature. I'm not going to go through each and every one of these, but it just kind of basically, you know, points out, as you can see, it's extremely important to understand that what we eat matters because food gives us life. It gives life to our bodies. Not only is it important that we eat a well-balanced diet, including plenty of the six essential nutrients, but it's also important to recognize that portion control should be considered as well. Um, we want to get in adequate, but not too much amounts of food to help our bodies. You know, too much of a good thing um, can turn harmful. So monitor your intake and pay attention to when you're full. That's something that we all should do. It's very essential. Uh, and vitamins, um, any group of an organic compound, which is essential for normal growth and nutrition, they're required in smaller amounts in the diet, basically because they cannot be synthesized by the, the body. Um, in the context of nutrition, a mineral is a chemical element required as an essential nutrient by, organism, by organisms, excuse me, to function uh, you know, perform functions that are necessary for life. Um, so just to kind of, you know, focus in a little bit more about what vitamins and minerals are, because we're going to be breaking some of those down specifically in thinking about bariatric surgery. Now, as a dietitian, I'm always looking for the simplest, most effective methods to encourage proper nutrition intake. Choose My Plate is a really valuable resource. It's basically the new food guide pyramid. It is simple to use and it encourages, um, you know, no matter your medical history, all of us need to make sure we have proper nutrition at all times and it really encourages us to get that. For bariatric surgery patients in particular, you want to keep in mind the importance of adhering to all of the stages of your diet progression. Adhere your diet um, per physician orders. Make sure you get that high quality um, protein with each meal, consume it first so that you don't, you don't get too full and can't get it in. Uh, you got to work your way around the other food groups. There's vegetables, fruits, grains, dairy. Make sure you're making proper food selections and keep in mind, of course, that the whole point of the diet, um, which is higher protein, lower fat and sugar content, uh, once you're full, stop eating. So, you know, in general, choose my plate is something that falls into all of these categories because it does promote that well-balanced, varied, um, optimal portion size meal across the board. 
So going back to the whole topic of this presentation, which is vitamins and minerals, a focus on bariatric surgery, um, I want to zone in a little bit more about these first. Uh, when it comes to bariatric surgery, you know, your physician's going to be monitoring your lab values to make sure that you're not becoming depleted in vitamins or minerals. Um, they're going to ask you a lot of questions at your follow-up visits to kind of watch for this. Um, it's important that you adhere to the vitamin and mineral regimen that they uh, put you on. In addition to eating a well-balanced diet each day, you want to have three meals a day, not skip meals, make sure that they are filled with a variety of the food groups um, to help ensure adequate vitamin and mineral intake from your diet as well. So have you heard that carrots are good for your eyes? That's definitely true. Um, carrots contain carotenoids that your body converts into vitamin A, which does help with eye function and to prevent eye problems. Um, if there is ever a concern that you're not getting enough of a general uh, vitamin or mineral, you can contact the physician here or the dietitian, and we're going to help work with you uh, to make sure that we pinpoint that concern and definitely correct it if that is the case. Um, you know, because as you can tell, vitamins and minerals play hundreds of roles in the body, just like we wrote down carrots just now. Um, everything that we, you know, are talking about, um, we can just link to how important it is. So it is important that you get enough of all of your essential nutrients. Um, for instance, you want to make sure you're getting in enough protein. Um, but, you know, if you don't get enough calories overall, your body won't use that protein for what it's meant to be used for. Uh, so that's where we kind of go back to the whole making sure you're getting enough of the macronutrients, which also will help ensure you're getting micronutrient goals reached. If your diet includes a wide variety of foods, um, that's, you know, only going to help making sure you're including whole grain products, fresh fruits and vegetables, dairy, nuts, seeds, eggs, meats. If you're um, doing that three meals a day, you know, you're probably getting in a really good amount of vitamins and minerals in your body, along with taking that um, vitamin mineral regimen your physician depicts. Um, and of course, always check with your physician, just want to reiterate that before taking vitamins and minerals adhere to their instruction. So the following slides focus on tips for helping to ensure certain vitamins and mineral needs are met by offering food sources that they're commonly found in. So I'm specifically going to talk about several that um, I do get a lot of questions about from our bariatric surgery patients and those that are um, definitely highlighted with the surgery in general as far as a need to make sure you're watching out for getting enough, um, enough of these. So iron uh, is the first one. Iron is an essential mineral needed for the transport of oxygen and oxidation, oxidation in cells. The body absorbs um, two to three times more iron from animal sources than from plants. Uh, so, you know, that's why I've listed the animal sources first, making sure that you're aware that some of the best sources of um, uh, animal sources of iron are lean beef, oysters, chicken, turkey, liver, liver uh, organ meats, um, plant sources, you know, they're still good. You do absorb less of the iron in plants, but every bite counts. Um, you know, you can, you can see here there's beans, lentils, uh, baked potatoes, dark green leafy vegetables, specifically spinach. I like to encourage that. Brex, a lot of breakfast cereals are fortified. Um, so, you know, and going back to every bite counts, you can also add a source of vitamin C if you, um, you know, to vegetarian sources of iron, because um, vitamin C actually enhances the absorption of iron. Um, some of the, the uh, best plant sources of iron you can get are here, but there are others. Uh, you can also cook with a cast iron skillet, just kind of a little side note, because um, that can uh, definitely increase that amount of iron you get as well. Calcium. Uh, the most abundant mineral in the body is calcium. It's needed for vascular contraction, muscle function, nerve transmission, and this is just to name a few functions. Uh, animal sources, um, obviously dairy products, you know, milk, yogurt, cheese. Um, these are natural rich sources. There's also plant sources, which include things like vegetables, um, kale, broccoli, and there's also fortified foods as well you can get calcium from. Zinc is an essential mineral involved in numerous aspects of cell metabolism. It plays a role in immune function, protein synthesis, wound healing. Uh, there, are, there are phiates, uh, which are present in whole grain breads, cereals, legumes, and other foods. Um, these actually bind to zinc and inhibit its absorption. Um, so thus the bioavailability of zinc from grains and plant foods uh, is actually lower than that from animal foods. So once again, I've listed the animal sources first. 
um, though there are still good sources of zinc in plant-based foods as well, just to kind of point that out and break it down. Copper, it's an essential mineral. It's involved in the uh, energy production, iron metabolism, brain development, immune system functioning. Um, you can see animal sources, um, plant sources are listed here as well. Now vitamin B12 um, is actually something that's obviously very hard in particular for a uh, vegetarian, people who are vegetarian, specifically uh, vegan, uh, those who have no meat or dairy at all to get. Um, it's really important to make sure you're getting enough uh, B12. It uh, helps make DNA and red blood cells. And that's just to name a few functions. So um, animal products are uh, a really good source. Plant sources, uh, fortified breakfast cereals in particular, um, so, you know, maybe looking at adding those fortified foods or taking a supplement as recommended by um, your physician if ever needed. Um, that is something a lot of times with bariatric surgery, they might look into vitamin B12, depending on what type of surgery you have and anything else that comes up along the way. I'd like to stress again, you know, the importance of adhering to your physician, monitoring uh, for any supplements, um, and only doing those as prescribed by your physician, you know, because a lot of things like vitamins and minerals, um, sometimes those can impact other medications you're taking. Certain ones should not exceed um, limits, so just don't do that without physician instruction. Folate, also known as vitamin B9. It's called folate or folic acid. It's a vitamin that's important for red blood cell formation and overall healthy cell growth and function. It's found naturally occurring in a wide variety of foods. There's a lot of vegetables it's found in, fruits, nuts, peas, seafood. Um, foods that have really high levels include asparagus, liver, Brussels sprouts, and spinach. Um, they are vitamin B9 or folate is an essential nutrient. It naturally occurs as folate. Now, when you see folic acid, that is synthesized. So when you're looking at things that are supplemented in foods and pills, that's folic acid. It is a little harder to digest and takes a little longer to digest the um, folic acid. Um, so a really good way, kind of like I keep emphasizing with all of these is, is um, you can get a lot of good nutrition, good vitamins and minerals naturally occurring in foods too. So that's why I've listed all of these sources. And I think you can see a common theme too. A lot of your dark green leafy vegetables, nuts, seafood, um, dairy, uh, kind of going back to that choose my plate concept, just getting a really good balanced variety of fruits and vegetables um, and all of the food groups uh, consistently can only help you along your journey um, with staying healthy and specifically with the bariatric surgery as well. So this next slide, high protein items. I wanted to briefly go back and mention um, the importance again of getting a good getting a good quality protein in with each meal. So, um, what is a good quality protein? Um, you know, examples if it's a liquid protein might include low fat or fat free milk. Um, you can mix that with protein powder. Um, there's high protein, low sugar, low fat drinks, um, protein containing clear liquids. If you have issues tolerating dairy um, at, at that point, especially early on in the surgery, if that is an issue, we have some options. Um, there's commercial protein drinks, glucerna, supplemental shakes, diet instant carnation breakfast shakes. Um, so just a lot of really good high protein sources. Uh, Examples of a good quality protein uh, food item may include fish, poultry, pork, creamy peanut butter, ground lean meat, uh, chopped tofu, low fat, sugar-free yogurt, specifically Greek yogurt, kind of going back to that high protein. Um, a lot of your Greek yogurt has even more protein and it still fits the bill um, with you know lower fat, lower sugar. Just make sure you're reading those nutrition labels or definitely give us a call, give the dietitian a call if you're wondering what's the best um, food choice for you. Uh, lean, lean cheeses, low fat or cottage cheese is actually another really good example of a high quality protein food item, um, scrambled egg, tuna, just keep in mind, make good food choices. Um, you know, for example, with the tuna, um, maybe trying low fat mayo, or of course, if it's in water, that's better. That's a lot healthier across the board, a little lower calories too. So, um, that kind of sums up our focus on vitamins and minerals. Of course, we could spend hours talking about vitamins and minerals, but I wanted to break it down in a little bit more detail and just kind of get you thinking about 
what the what the role is they play in your body, how important it is, um, and just you know, kind of the whole concept we talk about it with our bariatric surgery patients is mindful eating. So really, just being mindful of what you're eating, why you're eating it, just like fuel is to a car, um, nutrition keeps our bodies going. Um, you know, too much of a good thing um, can can lead to other issues that we don't want. You know, you don't want to put diesel <laughs> where, where it doesn't need to go. Um, so just making sure that you're really aware of those choices you're making, why you're making those, um, and use that nutrition to set you up for success. So a few quotes that I found when I was uh, researching and thinking about this topic that kind of stood out to me. Um, were ones I wanted to share with you. This first one is nutrition. Uh, nutrition is the key to overall good health and proper nutrition. It is essential for us to look, think, and perform at our best. And a healthy outside starts from the inside first. And the last quote is the doctor of the future will no longer treat the human frame with drugs, but rather will cure and prevent disease with nutrition. That was actually a quote by Thomas Edison. Just another way to highlight and summarize how important nutrition is. Um, and if you take away anything from this talk, just take away that nutrition is really worth understanding and making the most out of what we eat. Um, because there's so much um, involved in food, um, you know, it's eating to sustain us, but it can, it can go so much further than that. Um, so if you ever have questions, I know this is a recording, but you can call, uh, like I said, I'm Catherine Parker, you can call the dietitian at Stringfellow. My number, office number is 256-235-8949. And we, we do hope you've enjoyed this presentation and that you will contact our bariatric team if you ever have any questions and refer back to the main page of the bariatrics, um, bariatric section and on, under Stringfellow's website for upcoming bariatric webinars. We try to think of really interesting topics. We love doing this and love sharing it with you guys. Um, we're excited for the journey. Um, for those of you who have chosen to have bariatric surgery here, um, you know, uh, making sure you're, you're following the handout that we provide and utilizing the resources are only going to help. Like I said, we're excited to be a part of your journey and appreciate your time. Thank you.